Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Ah, okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, I think it's time. It's two o'clock. Um, at my time, <laughs> a different time for everyone. I we we, we come from different uh, uh, area. Okay. But uh, anyway, thanks for everyone attending our uh, ITF DDoS Open Work Open Threat Signaling Working Group uh, interim meeting this time. Okay, uh, I'm I'm Liang Xia, and uh, uh, my 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 co-chair is Wiry uh, Smith Smith Lof. Uh, Wiry, are you are you there? I'm here. I'm here. Okay. 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 Okay, so uh, I think we can start our today's uh, interim meeting. We have one hour's time. So, um, firstly, uh, our chair will give a, a very brief introduction uh, of this meeting. Okay, and uh, for this page, it's some uh, some 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 suggestions, some details of this this interim meeting. Um, everyone is here in our WebEx, and okay, and if you want to. Download the meeting slides. You, we have provided our link here, meeting slides, and we have our Etherpad for the for the note taking. And uh, you can go you can go to that link and to see uh, what our note taker has write down. And uh, later, uh, anytime you want to see the result, something you can see that. Okay, and we have our driver 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 link. But I don't think it's 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 uh, it's it's very necessary because everyone now is in the we are, we are all online we are use WebEx so anyway you can go go the driver yeah uh, there's no uh, people in driver uh, at the moment so uh, if you want you can join but uh, it seems that nobody use it now. And uh, I just want I just want to remind uh, for participant to sign a virtual blue sheet. It's a, it's a part link. Yeah, please. Very few people currently signed. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes, yes, because uh, now there's a relatively new way for us in this uh, in this new age for the pandemic for the coronavirus pandemic i think more and more meeting will be held online so uh we we do not have paper we 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 we, we write down on the online on the our etherpad uh, page so please 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 write down your name on the etherpad okay and uh um, Okay, uh, here is some tips for the for our new way of the interim meeting. Okay, um, so let so please please uh, please aware that uh, uh, our current uh, WebEx interim meeting is being uh, recorded. So for people who want to uh, see uh, who want to know our discussion later, so we have recorded all the all the all the discussion all the meeting and uh, uh, some suggestions please make sure your video is off uh, unless you are you want to present you want to discuss okay and uh, mute your microphone uh, to avoid the, some you know some 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 influence of others talking and uh, you can join the queue or remove you from the queue uh, by the tips and uh, of course, uh, don't 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 forget to write down your name on the video blue sheet, and uh, you can also use uh, driver. Okay. And this is not where uh, I believe uh, most of guys are very very familiar with this kind of information. If you are not very familiar, please read it and uh, becoming more familiar with it. Because that's all the uh, policies that uh, if you are the one of the attendees of the ITF meeting or ITF uh, this organization, you should be familiar with this policy. Okay. And uh, okay. And uh, uh, then uh, this uh, uh, we we need some help. Firstly, uh, blue sheets. Okay, everyone can uh, write down your name on the on the on our Etherpad and. Uh, Subscribe. Thanks for worry. He is on that. <laughs> He's taking care of. Yeah, but yes, uh, okay. yeah, 
Yeah, and the uh, note taker and uh, thanks to Weipan, uh, he, he will uh, be our note taker. Um, yeah, if other people are also interested, uh, you can go to visit the Etherpad. Okay. And uh, okay, uh, then uh, I'll, 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 I'll turn to Wari. Wari can uh, give us an introduction of our current working group draft status. Uh, well, we have uh, just recently published uh, two RFCs, uh, 8782 and 8783, that uh, are a core of DOT uh, protocol stack for signal channel and data channel. Uh, and it was a very hard job, and thanks to everybody involved, and it was particularly uh, a lot of discussion with Signal Channel uh, RFC. Finally, finally, they, they have been published. So, congratulations and thanks to everybody involved. So, yes, yes thanks everybody. Yeah, great work. Uh, <laughs> work yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, architect uh, uh, draft uh, is uh, in the RFC editor state. It, it, it's due to uh, uh, some subjective and objective uh, uh, circumstances. There is uh, uh, currently a long delay in publishing RFCs because RFC editor uh, switched from XML to RFC version 2 to XML to RFC version 3, and it was uh, just uh, a lot of burden on RFC editors, so publication process uh, is currently a bit slowed down, and uh, for, for, it's for quite a long time in the RFC editor queues, but we hope it will publish soon. So, uh, control and filtering rules, draft is currently in ISG evaluation, and um, as far as I remember, I just looked yesterday, it was uh, no discusses, from ISG members yet, so we 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 hope it will uh, it will pass uh, ISG evaluation smoothly, and then we'll uh, send to RFC editor. Uh, three drafts uh, are submitted to uh, for publication, but they uh, are not yet uh, reviewed uh, by our. Uh, Area director, so they're waiting for to be reviewed and uh, then send a publication. The telemetry draft is uh, the, the only draft that is being actively developed late, recently, and uh, we've seen uh, several revisions with quite uh, a lot of discussions on the mailing list. And uh, I think that also think that the draft is, is very close to a last call. But I think it, it, we need a more discussion, a little bit more discussion about it. But probably it's close to to like to uh, last call. And what about multi-home and uh, consideration draft? Uh, it's I think it's uh, 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 it wasn't uh, uh, developed uh, very intensively recently. So I think it's a, it's a bit of stuck. And uh, we we need new energy to push it out and to discuss it. I see no discussion on the list uh, about multi home and draft for 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 last half a year about. So I think we 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 think we should get more energy to uh, work on this draft. So so uh, Frank. Yes. You will tell us about uh, our current agenda. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, it's no problem. Okay, uh, so we almost finished our, um, our 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 session. So next one is uh, uh, we will have a relatively long discussion about the most important draft, our telemetry draft. And then we have, we will go through the multi-homing draft and the uh, use case for the telemetry draft. And then the uh, the drafter from China Mobile about their um, DOS server deployment. Uh, that's all for our today's draft presentation. And uh, if we have more time, we can uh, we can have a more broader discussion about our current charter or the future work. And uh, then we, we we can wrap up today's meeting. So uh, so so remember that we have one hour, uh, but I think it's enough. It's enough for us. So 
Okay, okay. Uh, is anyone has any uh, you know, uh, any 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 uh, does anyone has special agenda? If no, I think we can start today's uh, first uh, presentation. Uh, it's a uh, DOS telemetry. So, uh, Matt or Tiru, who will present it? Yeah, I, I, I will start. I will start, and I will ah, let okay. my yeah, okay. I will, uh, let my, my co-authors uh, further comment. Yeah, no, see, Matt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank thank okay. you, Frank. Thank you, Frank. Yeah, okay. So, so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so um, this, yeah, so this will be, I would say, the um, um, uh, presentation to, to give you a summary of what we have done since the, I would say, the last the last time we um, we we met together in, um, uh, on the work on on dot telemetry. So please, if you can, uh, to, to the next slide, please. Yes, uh, Meg, if you want the next slide, just tell me next, and I will uh, advance it. Thank you, Valerie. So next, please. Yeah, so the um, in, in in this slot, so uh, as I mentioned, so I will provide a, a studies and then we will zoom on some key, I would say, design points that um, uh, we have made already some decision on the list, but we need to to double check if everyone is okay with that, and then the, some next steps for for the draft. Next slide, please. So this is this is the um, I would say yeah. So the draft ha was was adopted the last last year, and since uh, the draft was adopted, so we went into I would say extensive uh, working on this on the on the on this on this on this document so that we can progress it um, uh, as fast as uh, as possible. So we went to uh, into nine revisions since then. Um, we doubled I would say the number of pages. We um, we cons we um, I would say we have a lot of details there for the specifications so that things are really really clear. Uh, instead of one young model, we have now two uh, two young models. I will explain later why we have that. Uh, in terms of attributes that we define, we are current. We have, I would say, more than 100 um, attributes that we are using for our for telemetry. We are including a lot, a lot, a lot of examples so that really, I would say, implementers and also the the readers can understand who, um, the, uh, I would say, the intent of many features that we are describing in that in that in that draft. And of course, and as usual as we have doing in in that, we are working together with the implementation and to to integrate any feedback that we receive from from them. So um, I want I want the list all of the change that we have we have made since since last la, last year, uh, but we'll focus only on a few of them. So next slide, please. So this is this is for for the, those of you who um, who are not familiar of I would say with, with the telemetry, um, which I suppose. And this client is all is all is, is also collocated with development. And that in the in that in that context, the dot client has is some my problem or or the problem. Matter you. Sorry. Hey, Matt, we can't hear you. Uh, your voice was breaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I I always really think it's my own problem. So so it's uh, it's network from the Matt from your side. It's your voice is not uh, very clear. Can you can you say something, Matt? No voice. Yeah, I think I think he's reconnecting probably. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hear you again. But uh, per, 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 perhaps I have a problem with my connection. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. It's 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 better. It's good now. Okay. So, uh, Tiro or John, please, if, when when you have any of these issues, please feel free to to jump in and uh, continue the presentation, please. So, sorry about that. So, um, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so in this slide, what I, what, I, uh, what I, I was about saying is that when, when there's a, um, a local information which is available by the local DMS, the DOTS client can share the information with the DOTS, the DOTS server, and we are not doing that in the uh, mitigation request because we don't want to interfere with that, and it, we, and also um, because of the um, the size of the telemetry data that we are sharing with the DOTS server, so we need an additional, I would say, signal to be sent to the server with this with this set of information. Next slide, please. 
Um, another, another context in, in, in which the uh, telemetry will be um, is, is really Ahmed, I will love to you. The telemetry information about the target okay. prefix, which is under, which is under attack, um, and then the um, the DDoS client will decide whether it has to to send a mitigation request or not. So in this example, it will it will send a mitigation request. Uh, so this is really proactive, and the um, the, uh, the the server and the the clients are really collaborating together in order to uh, to detect early as possible an attack and then to to pass a mitigation request. Next slide, please. So how to, um, this is more on, on the technicalities of the, I would say, on how we can uh, send the telemetry data. So um, as you know, we can do that with the, uh, the current existing message that we have in the, um, in the, in the signal channel, the signal channel um, specifications where, where we are defining, um, um, we, we are defining a new um, uh, type message, which we call the telemetry, in which you see we have a lot, um, a new operation path, which is the telemetry. And then we um, we there is an exhaustive list of parameters and attributes that we are we are convening in, the, in this in in this in these messages. Um, in this kind of I would say in this type of message we are really um, uh, not aggregating the data we have. We are allowing uh, um, um, a wide granularity of information that can be shared because the purpose here is to to share as much information we can with the with the peer. So that we can have, I would say, to, to be in sync, and so that um, we can foster the uh, the mitigation, that we can help to um, the um, the, uh, for instance, the dot client or the dot server to uh, to to assess whether the mitigation operation are really um, are, are are really on 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 track and on uh, progressing. Next slide, please. Um, uh, and we can also. So this is another. Um, um, another context in which we can use the telemetry, uh, tel telemetry, um, telemetry data is um, um, when there is, I would say, a, a mitigation request is already placed by the client on the server. Um, the the DOS client can send, um, as we do today in the um, the DOS signal channel, what we call the uh, efficacy update. And in that in that in that part, um, we we have this new extension in which the client can share more information about the i would say the ongoing attack with with the server uh, and we are putting that in uh, in the existing i would say efficacy update uh, but we augment it with new with new, with, with new with new attributes and in this the attributes that we are putting in this in this part of 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 messages are really aggregated and we don't have the same comprehensive that we have in the in the previous slide next one please um, in, 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 in the similar way, the DOS server can send um, a status update to, to, the, to the DOS client, and in that, um, for instance, uh, it can send more uh, data that can be used, for instance, for billing or, or whatever purpose by the DOS client. And um, um, we have this telemetry information that we can also send on the, um, uh, to, to, to the client. And this, this one, again, we are focusing only on aggregates. For instance, we are not sending data per protocol or per port and so on, uh, really because we don't want to exacerbate the, um, the size of the telemetry data that we are sending back to, uh, to the client. Next slide, please. Um, and also, there is a context in which we, um, as we have discussed already in the uh, telemetry data, that's, um, uh, as you know today, many of the detection techniques rely on thresholds. But the, the, uh, the threshold-based detection is really broken, and um, uh, there are, I would say, um, some attacks that can pass this kind of, I would say, um, uh, filters. Um, so that's why it is important for uh, the DOTS class server, if it wants to, uh, for instance, to detect uh, abnormal traffic or any attack traffic to, to to have an idea about the baseline or the traffic baseline of a, a given DOTS client domain. So in order to do that, we are um, uh, defining means in the telemetry um, um, uh, specifications to allow a DOTS client to share 
um, as much as possible uh, the information about the uh, the traffic normal baseline uh, so again this is really a comprehensive list of information it can be on 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 protocol port or a connection number etc and we have a lot of details in the draft next slide please um, this one also, if um, as you know, when we have a collaboration between the DOS client and the DOS server, and when there is an attack which is signaled, by, for instance, by the DOS client to the DOS server, uh, the DOS server will solicit a mitigation to, uh, so, so, so that the, it can inspect the traffic and clean the traffic before forwarding that tra the clean traffic into the DOS um, uh, client domain. Uh, but if the, the dot server that is not aware about the capacity of the, um, the, the links of the dot client domain, um, uh, the direction of the clean traffic into the dot client domain may be another source of attack. So uh, that's why uh, with the dot client share the, uh, what we call the, pipe, the, the pipes uh, of capacities that are for the ingress uh, to, with the dot server so that the server will take this information um, in order to uh, to adjust the traffic that will be sent or distributed um, among existing um, egress uh, links of the, the dot um, uh, client domain next slide please and and of course we have a lot of i would say um, uh, additional configuration uh, information that we need to um, to negotiate between the dot client and the server um, uh, for instance, the uh, measurement interval at, uh, uh, and so on, so that to make sure that we have the same reference interval measurement and the same um, uh, base, I would say, uh, metrics in order to, uh, to, to, to make the, uh, the computation and to make the analysis and so on. For instance, uh, the DOS client or can, can disable some, uh, some of the percentiles, for instance, if, if it is only interested on the high percentiles for, for the, for the for, for the traffic and so on, it can set that um, with, with the Dutch server and only that kind of information will be sent to the server. And of course, we are also indicating to the server uh, whether the, the client, for instance, is interested to receive the uh, server originated telemetry. This is um, interest, um, more, uh, I would say, relevant in case of the server update sends telemetry information in the update message that it sent to, to the client. And this is to, to avoid any, I would say, uh, um, uh, errors or any, um, I would say, exacerbating of the size of the uh, messages while this is not useful for, for the client. Uh, we are also introducing this, this notion of uh, the, the telemetry notification interval. So this is also, uh, again, another guard to avoid all the links with the, uh, uh, with the notifications and to avoid creating new congestions and while we are already under severe, severe attacks. We are also negotiating a lot of um, types there and types that we, um, that we that are used to filter out the data that we can we can we we are interested to receiving from the uh, the um, the server. Next slide, please. Yeah. So once we have, I would say, when we have defined all this, I would say the uh, the attributes for that can be used for the telemetry. Uh, one of the questions we have in the uh, early uh, phases of the specification is whether we need, as you know, for instance. In, um, I'm just giving here an example of one, the, the same attribute, which is the total attack traffic, for instance. Um, so the, um, the, the, the key, um, the, um, uh, the, the value of this, I would say, as you uh, in the, um, um, uh, the, the, um, the name of the attributes in dig, uh, digital, digital notification for uh, notation, for instance, will be different whether we are including this is in a pure telemetry um, or whether we include it uh, in, into an existing signal mis uh, ch ch channel messages. So we, um, we have discussed whether we will use only one key value for, uh, for both of them so that the, I would say it's up to the implementation to decide whether this is a telemetry or an efficacy update or an, um, uh, a normal, I would say, uh, signal, channel, um, signal channel message and then map it to, uh, to the appropriate attributes. But
I'm mad. I'm mad. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you're you're back. Y yes. So, uh, so, so, okay. Sorry about oh. that. But sorry about okay. that. But anyway, so, so yeah, Tiro okay. or Tiro or John, please, if you want to, yeah, because of my, I would say my connection problems. If you can, if you want, just to. Um, Okay, so um, um, next slide, please. Yeah, so the, the decision to, uh, that we, we, have, we have taken is to, to simplify the implementation, and, and that, this is why we, we went to, uh, we, we took key values for, um, even if this can be assimilated as a same attributes, we are, um, we are using two key values here to simplify the implementations, and there is no local mapping tables that will be uh, used uh, as a function of the type of the message in which we have we are inserting the telemetry data. Next slide, please. Um, so this this question whether we need to uh, we, we we have to define the attributes as a comprehensive the a comprehension required or a comprehension optional attributes, and uh, we went with the um, uh, as you can you can see in the next slide, please. That yeah. So as you know, the telemetry is all is is only um, are are really optional and. Uh, the telemetry data is only uh, used as a hint by the uh, by, by the server, so the server is really free to to um, to uh, to take into uh, into account this information for it for it, uh, for the mitigation. But it can it can it can use it of course, but it can ignore it. So this is really um, I would say um, uh, optional, and we don't want to um, to exacerbate the um, the person failure. So each time, for instance, if you have defined that as a comprehensive require, each time you will send um, an attribute which is not understood by the peer, the, there will be an error, and then we have to fall back into a normal process in which you don't insert that information. So that's why we are really consistent and coherent to what we have done in the, uh, for the other specification. So this is really um, a comprehensive um, optional um, uh, attribute. But then we have this issue, um, if, uh, given the ranges that we have um, uh, uh, defined for the uh, comprehensive optional attributes, um, this kind of keys that will be used will consume three bytes, so which will be, I would say, and given the amount of the data that will be sent in the telemetry, this may be problematic. So that's why we have this um, this proposal to um, to define um, a new range for the comprehensive optional attributes that will be in the half. This point that was built, I would say, in, uh, for against version one, in which I have shared this proposal, but there, we didn't make any, I would say, any um, conclusion about this one. And I would really like to hear from from you today whether we we will we you have any objection if we implement this this change. So is there any objection if we go with this with this design? Uh, I can uh, only tell my own opinion. Uh, I think that uh, I'm always in favor of, of saving uh, bytes on the wire. But I think that this must be discussed uh, on the list. Uh, at least uh, some people should uh, uh, evaluate this option. Some more, more experienced in. Uh, uh, this field, people should evaluate this option. So, so no objection from my uh, side, but I'm not uh, deeply involved, and I think more people need to discuss it. Hey, hey Med, uh, this is still here. Uh, uh, I have a comment here. I mean, as you know, right? I mean, telemetry data is supposed to be optional, and uh, the dot server. Uh, 
can ignore the telemetry messages, right? I mean, uh, so the whole idea was uh, telemetry is an optional feature and uh, whether the dot server uses some of these features for uh, identifying its medication strategy or not is optional. So uh, making it uh, a comprehension required uh, seem to save a byte seems like an overkill for the dot server to understand all these messages. And otherwise, it has to start rejecting these messages, right? If you comply with uh, dot signal channel specification. Hello. Hey, I think we lost Med again, but I think we should take this discussion to the mailing list. So, so, so I, I mean, yeah, I really have a problem with, with my connection. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, Med, I, I don't know whether you got my comment. Hello. I think we are. We are becoming more and more used to mad as the periodically disappear. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I think we have the consensus. Yeah. But uh, uh, please uh, read these things to you uh, in the middle list. Uh, we can get more feedbacks, comments. Yeah. We can go on. <laughs> Uh, maybe uh, Tiru, you can help Mad to continue. We we, we lost uh, Mad. Let's give Mad uh, one more minute, thirty seconds. <laughs> okay. It seems that uh, his problem becoming um, more. Hey, John, do you want to take over? Here? Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll take over. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, so yeah. on the that's telemetry, that, uh, okay. So mm -hmm. the telemetry attributes, the basically what Red is asking here is to uh, originally the comprehension required was one all the way through to sixty three, uh, sixteen three eight three, and it's just to make a subset of that just comprehension optional so that we can have the telemetry attributes uh, sitting down in a single byte. That's what that is. But yeah, we'll take it to the mailing list. Okay, so good. Next slide. Okay, so here is uh, currently we're sharing the information in particular things like the different attack IDs, what's going on, and uh, the, uh, the draft originally just had attack name included in there, which is a string, which is quite long, which then takes up quite a lot of space sitting there within the telemetry data. So, uh, what we've uh, proposed is that through the data channel is that we just have an attack ID and attack name mapping system in place so that we only need to pass the attack ID um, between the client and the server over the signal channel as is necessary. But if for some reason that the uh, the client and the server have not exchanged um, via the data channel the attack names to attack ID mappings, then the client or server can include the attack name as part of the data that's going back and forth. In particular, it could be covering there's a new attack name just come out, and yet both ends haven't synchronized on that. Okay, I think next slide. Okay, so uh, a lot of the telemetry stuff made us realize that uh, we have severe challenges with large uh, data packets. And there is within uh, the co op underlying mechanism, there's the ability to be able to do uh, what a block one and block two, where data can be uh, reduced down into blocks and then sent over the co op channel, reassembled at the other end, and things continue. We looked at trying to break the data we send down into individual chunks so that everything sits into a packet so we can parcelize everything up into individual packets. But the Yang Ini data requires a fully fledged JSON uh, definition sitting there. We found that that wouldn't work there. Uh, the use of block one and block two, the challenge is that they are lock stepped in that you send a block. The other end says, yep, I got it. You can then send the next block. The other end says, yep, I got it. Please send the next one. And there's a lockstep process. But if we are running in a pipe full scenario, uh, because we're under attack, uh, we can't have that lockstep. We can't necessarily have bi-directional traffic. We can have unidirectional traffic. Um, so a solution, or well, a potential solution to that is we came up with a block three, block four equivalent to the block one and block two, which doesn't require uh, packets to be ignored. So that uh, with a, uh, a block three, which is a, a push or a, 
uh, type environment is that all the data can be just pushed at once and then the server can receive it and acknowledge it at any one point in time at the end. And likewise, block four is when the server is sending stuff back, it can just send all the data in a series of blocks and there can be a single acknowledgement at the end. Embedded in there, we have recovery, so we can say, well, we're missing block one, five, and 29 uh, type stuff sitting in there. So um, it, it works in a, a lossy environment. Okay, next slide. Okay, so uh, this just really talks about this particular uh, draft that we have out there. Um, in there, we have uh, things to do with things like probing rates, so we can make sure that that the actual block three, block four don't overload a uh, pipe in their own rights by sending too much data. So we have controls in place what's taking place there. And we've put in something for, called max payloads, which basically says after 10 packets, take a breather, uh, maybe exchange something uh, and carry on. Uh, and we have got within the uh, block three, block, op block four options, we have using the uh, co-op e tag and request tags uh, to identify that this particular set of blocks is associated with this particular body of data. And there's a new say, response code that comes back and says, well, yeah, I got everything but missing blocks one, five, and 10 or whatever, so that there can be recovery sitting in there. Next slide. Okay, so here's just as an example, uh, we can see the traffic being sent, on, so four puts go up. Uh, two of them get lost, so the server realizes something is missing, so returns with, in this case, it's a 418, but we think we're going to go with 419 code, um, saying, give me these missing blocks, number one and two, so it retransmits blocks one and two, two still doesn't get through, and then it requests it again and so on. So we can just see the recovery mechanism in place there. Uh, next slide. And the same for block four is just transmission from the server with a whole lot of telemetry data coming back to the client and some of the traffic gets lost. And so the client can request uh, that he wants some missing blocks. Or optionally, the client can decide, well, actually, um, life has moved on. I don't really need to re-request these. We're in a lossy environment. Uh, let's just wait for the next update. So draft covers that. Next slide. So within the, the current telemetry draft, we make a reference to the fact that there is this ongoing block three, block four work, um, but we haven't said it's a requirement that this is taking place because uh, all the different parts have not yet come together. Uh, currently in the draft, we we'll have to use block one, block two, which does have its limitations because of the lockstep requirements sitting there. And we do recognize that a full inbound pipe, for example, will cause us problems. So it's just saying that we can consider the use of the block three, block four option until that becomes an RFC in its own rights or something like that. Uh, we can only just recommend that people can think about that. Next slide. Okay, so just moving on to the implementation uh, and the interrupts where we're going on. So underbedding uh, all or underwriting all the uh, DOT's work has been sort of implementations and interop testing, to, which have sh has shaken out quite a lot of kind of misunderstandings or things that just need sorting out. So current status, as far as my perspective is concerned, is uh, this is where uh, I'm at with the NCC implementation. Uh, everything is up to date apart from the telemetry, which is version 7, and I'm working on bringing it up to version 9. The main fundamental difference there is the attack ID to attack name mapping. Uh, that we mentioned before. And it's currently using block two. I haven't got the block four implemented stuff in there. So that's the situation where I am at the moment. So it, it's a fairly mature there. It's uh, servers, again, stated before, is publicly available on the internet for people to try uh, their client implementations against, or if they want to try a call home, all that kind of stuff is available there. Next slide. Um, do you want to pick this up or kind of my bit? Uh, so Kenobi has been doing the other half is the GoDots implementation, the uh, open source implementation. And hey, John, oh, can you take comments at this stage? Sure, we go, go ahead. Yeah, no, go ahead. Yeah. Hey, hey, John, on the previous slide, right? I mean, uh, I like the idea of exchanging the uh, attack ID and names in the dots data channel, especially because the names are uh, not standard, right? I mean, every vendor has its own way of interpreting a uh, attack description. Right, and yep. if somebody is using, let's say, um, 
NLP or deep learning to basically map these using some board emitting techniques to identify whether it maps to some attack they already have. I, th I think I think sharing sharing as much de detailed description of the attack name is, is a good idea and only can be done in a data channel. And uh, if, if if all the attack description details are sent in uh, signal channel, it, we have size restrictions. So I, I think if somebody wants to have uh, um, deep learning techniques to map the attack IDs to whatever uh, mitigation techniques they have. Uh, I think definitely a data channel seems to be a good place for that. Thanks. Yeah, uh, and, and certainly we uh, within there we actually have vendor ID, and then the, all all the different attack IDs. So that for a particular vendor, he can have his own set. So vendor A and vendor B um, will be different. Their interpretations are different, but you can come up with a mapping that vendor A's X means vendor Y's Y. Yes. Yeah, that can all be automated. Yeah, if, yep. I, I, and on the question of block three and block four, right? Looks like I mean, I mean, you're heading the path of uh, uh, of the quick, right? I mean, quick protocol that's being discussed at ITF, where you can you can do multiplying, uh, multiplexing, and you don't have to worry or worry about head offline blocking, right? Uh, uh, that seems to be a great way of doing it. But uh, uh, is is that creating a normative dependency on that? Because that seems to be a much uh, uh, because our uh, for a large data center or an ISP that is getting attacked, uh, right, uh, or, or a large enterprise getting attacked, the telemetry details are going to be a large set of messages, right? And uh, uh, and if we envision the telemetry details are going to be large set of messages and will be exchanged during uh, extreme network conditions, for example, uh, when the network is congested, right? Do, do you see that there is there is going to be more need for block three and block four going i know i know those that draft is not yet adapted but do you see that uh, it's it's going to become more of a mandatory implementation that will be required by dots uh I, I, yes i certainly think so in, in particular if there's a likelihood of any lossy pipes or any lossy connections anywhere okay yeah and we will have lossy connections at the time of uh uh, mitigation, right? I mean, Absolutely, I mean, yes. So that, that's that's why we came up with block three, block four, is to be able to get around the issue of the fact that uh, block one and block two are lockstepped, in that the, uh, you have to have uh, symmetric traffic taking place. Well, we need to be able to do this asymmetrically. Okay. Just just one for the comment about this this part, uh, Tiru, and is that actually yes, so we we are, we are as as mentioned in the uh, one of the slides that we are not using on purpose, I would say, any normative language to avoid any dependency in the, any delay of the specification. That's the first point. The second point is that in the draft we have many, I would say, tweaks in order to optimize data. For instance. Uh, we have the uh, this ability to filter out the data that can be conveyed in the signal channel so that you can control the amount of data so this can fit one or very few um, i would say uh, messages so we have we, ha we have some i would say some some tools there in order to, to control the size of the uh, messages themselves but yes i agree with, with john that's in, and in in in, in, uh, in some time we will need to have this this block three and block four to be implemented but we cannot see it as a mandatory right now in the in the current specification because we don't control, I would say, the um, how that specification will go through the uh, the co-working group and 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 so on. So um, that, that's why we we are proposing this approach that we yes we will record the issue we will work on I would say on tweaks uh, on how we can do things better without. Uh, frozen the specification to something that we are not sure that we'll get in the in, 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 in soon in time, so that we can deliver a solution to be to be to be there for telemetry. Um, this solution can be, I would say, hopefully uh, enhanced with once we have this block three and, and block four. But we are not recommending to have not, at least we are not using any normative language for for that one. Okay, okay. thanks, Matt. Hi, hi, it's Frank. Uh, sorry, everyone. I think uh, we are we are short of time. <laughs> time flies, so please uh, make make it faster, because we have several topics, uh, other topics. Okay. Okay. So next slide. Uh, next slide. Okay. So just basically, we did a lot of uh, interoperability tests back in March, April. Uh, there's a couple of things still outstanding, and we found it very useful to pass information back and forwards. And in the sort of preliminary test, we were talking about eight or nine packets required for a basically a fairly minimal subset of telemetry information. So uh, for body of information, so we, we do need um, the ability to be handle block packets. Okay, next slide. Uh, so here just briefly is covering where we're at. And as we can see, uh, fairly 
well covered in terms of what's there in the specification. Okay, next slide. Um, okay, so we, we can pick up this a bit later, but just the, uh, if, if someone is writing telemetry information to the server and the server is giving his own version of the telemetry information back, who is who is the boss in all this? So uh, we, we just need to clarify that. So we can pick that up in the working group as we short of time. Okay, next slide. Um, here is uh, just so again clarification. Um, again, we can pick it up on the sort of the working group uh, general mailing list. Next slide. Uh, and the, again, we've uh, just picking up it's, it's some detail. Again, we can go to the next slide. And so next steps. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll pick up on a couple of uh, bits of feedback, work it into the next version, and then go for a working group last call. Any further comments? Uh, yes, uh, it's Frank. Uh, as a chair, um, uh, we, we we think that uh, we should uh, make it faster, make the uh, whole process. So I think for us, uh, for us, for, for our for us chairs, we will um, request because uh, current version, uh, you there's a lot of uh, young attributes. Uh, for the DDoS mitigation telemetry, so and uh, it's a very long, young, 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 young model draft. So I think we should re uh, request the young doctors review, so to help improve the whole quality of the young data model. So that's what we will do. And secondly, I think uh, all this uh, DOS telemetry information is also very related to the traffic analysis to the uh, DDoS uh, traffic situation, something. So I think uh, it's also very necessary. We ask the uh, OPS area directorate to have the review of the current draft from the, you know, from the traffic uh, aspects. So uh, all of your, all, all of your, all of your uh, uh, new attributes. So that's what we want to do, and uh, we hope that uh, uh, there's more discussion about. Uh, um, especially from the operator's view, uh, if, if they can give some comments on the main list about uh, uh, all, all the value of this of these attributes, that's we, that will be great. Anyway, we want this uh, draft to you know to make it faster. Is that okay? So, yeah. Yeah. All, so, all so, so, yes. So, do, do you mean that you really request an official, I would say, a review from the ops director right, and the young doctors? Yes. Yes, I want to do this. These two requests. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, so really, really cool. Yeah, thanks. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So for 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 saving time, you know, we 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 are we are we we don't have too much time. So, uh, I I recommend that if we have any new comments, we can have we can post it on the main list, so we can go to next draft presentation. So it's about the dos dos multi homing. So it's still met. That, that will be, I would say, really, really fast. This one. Um, Great. Mm. Yeah. So for for the next slide, please. So we have only one slide for. Yeah. So this is. Yeah. So that we have released the um, uh, the um, NFT this version last um, in, in 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 May. So to fix some normative language or to uh, to fix some minor edits there, which we received from the authors. Um, because because I'm personally, I would say, too familiar with the uh, the documents, and it's sometimes difficult to um, I would say. <laughs> To see issues, so I have asked some of the co-authors to double check if there is any, I would say, issues or any suggestion to enhance the uh, the specification that the um, the feedback I received from um, um, weapon in particular that yeah the text is is, is I would say the, he, he don't see any, any issue any issues there. So um, I reiterate what I have sent to, to the list. Uh, we really need I would say fresh eyes to look on the text and to um, to share reviews and feedback on on that one. So um, um, I don't think that the document is really for working up last call yet because um, 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 uh, we don't have, I would say, a lot of reviews so far. So I will I suggest to wait for a more or two or iterations for for the draft before we uh, we target the uh, last call. And I suggest to to have a deadline for uh, September to have this document this document I would say stable. Um, so that's. That's all what I have to say on, on this one. And um, uh, of course, 
uh, please review and, and share your comment on this on this document. So, any comments on this draft? If no, uh, we can go to next one. Most telemetry use case. So, uh, Yuhei, it's your turn. Yeah. Yeah. Yuhei, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, so I, I will make presentation quickly. Uh, so next, please. Mm. Uh, so this is background slides. Uh, and at ITF 106, we presented a telemetry use case, and uh, some people suggested us to write telemetry use case draft. And so we merged telemetry use cases are uh, proposed by uh, China Mobile. Uh, next, please. And uh, this this is the objective of the draft. Uh, so the so objective of the draft is uh, showing how to use those telemetry in a network and uh, diffuse of uh, this, those telemetry. And uh, contents of the draft is uh, sample use cases, uh, including uh, aim of the use case and what components are deployed in the network and how they cooperate and what information is exchanged. Uh, next, please. And uh, these use cases are mainly divided by three types, uh, use case using attack traffic bandwidth information and use case using attack traffic attack type information and the other. Uh, I will not explain each use case here, uh, but these all use cases can be carried out using dots telemetry uh, from dots client to dot server. Uh, next, please. And so this slide shows what attributes of dots telemetry are used in our use case or are not used. Uh, so far, uh, some attributes such as baseline or total attack connection are not used in our use cases. Next, please. So, so we will add some additional use cases which use attributes uh, for next. Uh, and we will add some use cases uh, in, uh, uh, sorry, uh, I will uh, add additional use cases which use a baseline or a total attack connections and so on. And I, we will add some use cases in which signal from server to client is used. So if you have comments to my draft, uh, please give me a comments on mailing list. Uh, courses are also welcome. Uh, next, please. So this is a discussion, right? Uh, so we have some options how to move forward with this draft. Uh, one option is recurring working adoption after addressing comments from working group. Uh, some people prefer uh, on mailing list. Uh, the other option is adding a high-level use case description to the telemetry draft. And at IATF 106, so Chair said this is better. So I already asked this question on mailing list. So if you have any thoughts, please reply on mailing list. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, uh, Yuhei. So, so efficient the presentation. So I, I want to ask any comments about uh, the content about the next step of this draft uh, especially is uh, re re uh, it's relevant with the telemetry draft so how, how, how do you see yeah yeah personally as, as i as already mentioned in the mailing list i think that is a, this is a useful draft and um, this is um how to be i would say uh, perceived as a standalone document in which i would say uh, this, it can evolve independently of the telemetry specification itself that we have already, I would say, a very huge document. So, um, yeah, so I really support to have this as a use case document, which is specific to telemetry. And we can work on that on that part to uh, to add more, I would say, more use cases uh, and so on without, I would say, having this completely to introduce. Uh, in, in, Uh, so I, I I have a question to you, Madam. Mm, do you think current draft uh, 
uh, closely mapping to your tenement draft document, or oh, there are still some gap. They are not so, uh, you know, to uh, very, very uh, overlapping each use cases with your solution. Hello? Lost. I think we lost. Her. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but but uh, uh, to uh, Frank, my opinion is I think we should definitely pursue this draft. Uh, uh, this this draft actually talks about a lot of scenarios, right? Uh, I, I'm not sure how we're going to convert all of them and squeeze them into the telemetry draft, right? So I think it's better that the telemetry draft refers to this one as an informational draft, and we continue to make progress on this one. So for me, option one looks like a uh, more uh, preferable option to make more progress on this and have more discussions. I, th I think I think it discusses several use cases. Maybe there are a few more use cases that it needs to add, but uh, I, th I think definitely uh, it, it would cover the various reasons why telemetry both from the, the client and server uh, would help both the peers to exchange and then make use of it, right? So uh, I, 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 I support this work and uh, I think we should adapt this. Okay, uh, as an individual, um, my personal opinion, I, I think that uh, for the for simplify the all the process, if the current draft uh, use case draft is uh, it's good and uh, it's uh, mapping to the telemetry draft, uh, well, or we can um, we can we can make it uh, um, to to good enough in a short time. I prefer the option two because. Uh, now, uh, now more and more working group, all the ADs are recommending use uh, to, you know, to just uh, uh, use case uh, as the appendix of the, some architecture or solution draft. So it's a, uh, it's uh, you know, um, it makes all the process simple. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just my personal opinion. Uh, let's see uh, how how the progress, how the quality of current. Uh, use case draft and make decision later. Hi, it's Valerie. Uh, as an individual, I uh, also want to add uh, a consideration that if uh, use case draft is a separate document, uh, then there is a dependence uh, on the telemetry draft on uh, use case draft, at least it, it must reference it. So it's, it's, it may slow down publication of the telemetry draft, but anyway, uh, I think that both options uh, should be considered and there are some uh, uh, advantages and disadvantages of both approach. As implementers, uh, usually it's better if uh, use cases uh, are at least briefly explained in the main document so you, you can understand uh, what, what are you implementing and uh, what, what, it, what is it for. But uh, of course, if it makes uh, the... Uh, main document very large and difficult to read, then it's better to um, separate use cases from the uh, main document. Uh, so both options uh, should be considered. Probably we can discuss it with the, on the list and uh, probably with uh, uh, just, uh, consult uh, our area director what, is, what he thinks about it. Yeah, and and, and... Uh, uh, Frank, I understand where you're coming up with regard to um, uh, ISEC discouraging use cases draft, right? But this is more than a use case draft, right? I mean, this is this is going to be talking about how uh, this uh, telemetry could be used in specific network environments and uh, uh, how they can leverage this telemetry data to solve specific uh, uh, problems, right? I mean, uh, for deciding the mitigation strategy or for uh, SecOps purposes, right? So it, it seems more of an operational, uh, it, it, it covers more than use cases, it covers how it can be deployed in specific environments and how uh, uh, specific environments can use this telemetry for, for doing some more engineering work, whether deep learning or uh, supervised machine learning and other work that could pave way for that, right? So uh, I, I think this looks more than an use cases draft and probably it's 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 it's, it's into the uh, area of both use cases and uh, deployments and how people should deploy yeah. and use this and enhance their uh, mitigation strategies using this. 
Okay, okay, uh, Tiru, I, I, I got your point. Okay, let me let me think uh, think more time. Okay, and okay. and uh, yeah, uh, and also let the draft uh, go 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 forward. We we can we, we we will see. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Frank. Yeah. And I think we still have the final. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Uh, Meilin, uh, can you do the presentation? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, we we are we are we are near the end of the session, so please hurry up. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll go yeah. Faster. yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. This first presented at the ITF Wonderfly, so I have received some comments. Uh, I have made a new version new version of this chart, so I will all introduce the uh, updated contents next. Um, okay, next. The goal of my draft is, made, is to make some uh, informational recommendation for the DOS agent for deployment. And here we can decide about three scenarios. Next. In the scenario inside the ISP, I have changed the network structure and to make it much more abstract and more flexible. So we can uh, adjust it according to the size of our network. And I have also, uh, okay, in the figure left, right, I put out the secondary network for detailed analysis. And here we can decide about to uh, attack base. You can see the frag one and frag two. The, at, the attack source and destination are different in the frag one and frag two. And here we can say about to uh, deploy the DOS client in the detector and the deploying, deploy the DOS server in, in the router. Here, what is new here is that detector could be a uh, netflow or IP face collector or firewall or IDS. Next. In the second scenario is about the uh, scenario about between ISPs. Here I have made some changes to uh, decentralize those car those agents with ISP. The DOS agent inside SP will not only match the DOS agent inside, but also match the DOS agents in the in the other ISP, and only match the higher highest level agents. Next, oh oh back back, yes, and I have another scenario is about enterprise and ISP. Where we can say about another deployment mode is MTD uh, node. This MTD is generally specific server. Does, age, does client deployed within the MTD node according to the selection of the uh, enterprise? Next. Uh, what will what we'll do to the next uh, version of my draft, I will further describe, describe the deployed menus in detail and solve the problem. How to know the scope of management on the other side with automatic configuration. This is also the comments from, the, uh, from other, other people. And for this problem, it's much more difficult for me, so I need uh, more comments and co-arts to make this draft move on. Thanks. Next. And, and I also want to make a discussion about uh, how to make make this draft move on to uh, ask for work group abortion, adoption, or merge with any other uh, drafts or, or make some other new contents. Thanks, that's all. Any 
comments? Um, actually, I I don't see too much progress of this draft and too enough uh, discussion of it on the main list or other place. And I personally, I I cannot understand clearly what is the new things comparing to the existing do, uh, DOS uh, documents and the solutions. Um, the, so, meaning, I think you still need to clarify uh, your objectives um, in the main list and with other, uh, you know, other um, active people in working group and, uh, and uh, have more discussion on the main list. And uh, also, you can clarify to us, Chair, um, you know, what is your goal, what is your ob objective? Uh, but still, I, I, at current time, I, I, I still am not very clear about the goal of this draft. Mm, and uh, the content uh, is, uh, doesn't make, uh, make uh, enough progress, I think so. So, do you get my point? So, I, I think, uh, yeah, yeah, I think uh, you still need uh, need some time to make make clear of what we want to get from this draft. Uh, yes, we could go to the uh, slide uh, two. The current problem I want to uh, throw is to make. is to make the uh, the program with automatic configuration is how how do the DOS agents know the attack target from to which DOS client or DOS server. In addition to uh, manual manual configuration. Just the fear current content can be combined with with several other documents such as the multi homing or the telemetry use case or other documents. I don't I don't see the reason why we need uh, this individual draft to describe uh, the you know the different uh, actually the different uh, uh, different. Uh, Different uh, consideration is related with different uh, uh, aspects, such as how to do the multi-homing, how to do the um, how to do the architectural design. So, so I, I I I don't see any new things here, or the reason why we need an individual document about this. But that's just uh, my my personal, my individual feeling right now. So that means you, yeah, maybe uh, you need more contents to clarify this, all these problems. Okay, I see. Yeah. Anyway, get more comments, get more discussion on the main list it will be helpful. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you for your presentation, yeah. We can discuss uh, later. Yeah. Um, so, finish all the all the presentation. Yeah. Yes, uh, we are ten minutes uh, behind uh, our uh, ending time. So, thank you very much for everybody who presented. I think it was a very uh, fruitful meeting, and uh, a lot of things uh, were discussed, especially about the meter draft. It's quite interesting. And uh, I think that uh, the next steps, as Frank uh, already said, that we will ask, uh, request an official uh, review of Young Doctors and uh, Ops uh, uh, Directorate. And uh, I encourage people to more actively participate in discussing multi home and drought because it, it has very low. Uh, discussion activity from the last several months and it seems to us that it's uh, a bit uh, get stuck and we need to move it further and um, telemetry use cases i think we'll uh, discuss on the list whether it is uh, useful for to have it as a separate document document or to merge uh, with 
uh, to make a draft uh, and to, from from what we've seen now uh, some people probably a lot of more participants uh, a little bit more uh, since it must be separate draft but i think it must be, it must be, it must be confirmed on the list and discussed and uh, also discussed with ben and uh, thank you for hierarchical deployment i agree with frank that uh, it's it's probably uh, must be discussed whether it is worth to have uh, this document as individual document or, or probably merge it with some other draft. Uh, well, uh, so uh, I think uh, uh, everything must be, all the things must be discussed on the list. So thank you very much for, for everybody for the very good meeting. Yeah, yes. It's we, we have done. We have finished the meeting. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for your time. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye. Yeah. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye. Worry. Yeah.